And that, that's a key question. And the way that I have answered that question for myself and for others, I know I've forgiven that person when I can see them, be in their presence, and not have that emotional negative reaction towards them. That I can feel okay around them and not feeling like that's the one that did something to me or I just want to back off, I don't even want to be around them. It doesn't mean that I have to become best friends of theirs. It doesn't mean I even have to trust them again. We talked about that. Trust has to be earned. It has to be rebuilt along the way. But it does mean that I'm not going to hold this against them anymore. I don't have that emotional tightness when I'm around them. And I also make certain promises to myself. Let me give you four. I will not dwell on this incident, whatever it was that precipitated the hurt that turned into to bitterness. I'm not going to dwell on it. I will not bring up this incident again and use it against that person. I will not talk to others about this incident. Do you know what that person did to me? I won't go there. I will not let this incident stand between us or hinder a personal relationship. I'm ready to re rebuild that. I am willing to do that. I've seen people work through that. And again and again, I have to say, it's a process. And you lapse back. And then you have to deal with it again. But I told you about my uncle, who is consumed with bitterness. I have probably never known anyone that was as destroyed by it because it was such a long-term thing for him. And it, it had him in such grip. And I remember later in life when he was dying, he was in a hospital near where I lived. And I would go over and talk with him about his relationship with the Lord. And no, he wouldn't accept the Lord. And time and again, I would get calls from the hospital saying, you better come over, your uncle is going to die. He won't make it through the night, and he wants to see you. I would go to the hospital, I would talk with him, I would plead with him again to give his life to Christ. I said, you're going to die. You need to know Jesus. Where are you going to spend eternity, Bob? He will forgive you. And I would go through it, and he would be resistant. Many times, I lost track of how many times. One time I went over, and I was getting impatient. And I, I was very strong with him. And I was right on him because I knew that he didn't have long to live. And I said, why won't you give your life to Christ? Why won't you accept the Lord? He said, I can't. I said, yes, you can. He said, no, I can't. I said, why can't you? He said, I can't accept the Lord because how could I ask the Lord to forgive me when I won't forgive my mother and my brother? Interesting. I said, well, you can forgive them. I said, your mother is dead. Your brother is dead. I said, we can pray right now, and you can let that poison go, and you can tell God that you forgive your mother. That was what he was fixated on, because he felt like she had set this whole thing up against him. I said, you can, we can pray right now, Bob. You can let it go. He said, no. He said, I have to go to the cemetery where my mother was buried and do it there. I said, you can't leave the hospital. You, 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 they won't let you out of the hospital. He said, I have to go. I didn't know what to do. I talked to the administrators of the hospital and tried to work it through with them. And they said, no way. But finally, they reluctantly said, well, if he takes his oxygen tank and you get a wheelchair and do this and that, you can take him. The hospital was about 25 kilometers or more from the hospital. I got him in the wheelchair with his oxygen tank and other equipment, put him in the back seat of my car, 
And we drove for almost an hour to the cemetery without saying a word. I was praying all the time that he wouldn't die in the back seat of my car. But we got to the cemetery and I found the headstone where my grandmother had been buried. And then I went back and I got my uncle, I got him out of the car, I got him in his wheelchair with his oxygen, and I wheeled him over right in front of his mother's headstone, tombstone. And I walked away. And I was just praying by myself, and I just waited. And pretty soon, after several minutes, I heard him say, Ma, I forgive you. This is Bob. That's all he said. I didn't say anything. I went back, got him in the wheelchair, took him back, put him in my car, was taking him back to the hospital. I didn't say anything. He finally said to me, he said, Dennis, how good a liar are you? I said, why do you ask? What, what do you have in mind? He said, I know I'm going to die very, very soon. I know I've been a very bad person. I've lived a horrible life. And I know at the funeral, I want you to preach my funeral. I know there's nothing good you could say about me. But I wonder if you could lie a little bit and say, you know, he wasn't that bad. He did some good things. And just tell a few lies to make me sound a little better. And I said, Bob, I said, the best thing that I can say about anyone at their funeral is that they knew Jesus Christ as their Savior and they're with him in heaven. I said, can I say that about you, Bob? Silence. Pretty soon he said, now you can. And in the back seat of my car, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. He died a few days later. I had his funeral, and I could tell the people that story. But the point was this. Bitterness had so consumed and destroyed him and blocked him from any relationship with God, destroyed his family, friendships, his own health, one miserable man. So sad he had to live all those years that way, where he could have had a free heart. He could have had his heart renovated by the Lord Jesus Christ, but he didn't do it. But thank God he did it at the end of his life. And literally, when he said, Ma, I forgive you, and he released that, the poison was drained out of his life. I wonder about you. Is all the poison out of your life? Have you forgiven everyone that's hurt you? Could there be any root of bitterness there that you have denied? Anybody you want to get revenge on? Then I plead with you, go back through this material in the lecture, go back through those scriptures, and cry out to God for grace to be able to forgive, and then do what I've told you to do earlier. Think through how much God has forgiven you for. Write it down. And as you do that, you'll say, who am I not to forgive everyone and anyone that has offended me? And you will find that blockage in your heart break free. Break free. If you deal with guilt, if you deal with bitterness, a whole new freedom and joy and peace will come in your relationship with God. You'll be well on your way to having an untroubled heart. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.